ranked 15th by the WBC, a record of 36 and 5, but has had disappointing results in some of his big fights. So he now has his trainer, George Benton. And we asked Alex about how Benton has changed his style. If you notice my style, I was always a, I was always a European fighter. I stood up in the air, and I always stayed straight up when I got hit. And I would go backwards, and I'd be up in the air, and my chin would be up in the air, and I got hit a lot of times. Now you see, most of the time, you see I've been a crouch. I've been a defensive, missing punches. And I even, you know, I even move my head a little bit, which is a lot different than before. More than a trainer, Georgie Benton is a strategist. He's a former fighter that understands styles. He can read those styles. You box a fighter and fight a boxer, and he's got a fighter in there with Alex Stewart who can carry out the game plan. George Benton, who fought as a middleweight and has handled 14 world champions. Meanwhile, Darren Hayden, heavyweight, who has shown some ability, trying to make a name for himself tonight against Stewart. And we asked both men, how they see the fight tonight? Well, I know Downhill is, is a decent fighter. He's, he can take a good punch. He's um he has some pretty good boxing abilities. Um, you know, he's an average guy in certain areas. Um, I think he has a, he has a great you know great courage and stuff. He's, he's stepping in the ring with me. I think this will be his biggest test up to date. I got this thing in my head that I'm I'm, I'm Pernell Whitaker. You know, I'm going to do a little Pernell. I'm going to do my squat. I'm going to bend. I'm going to duck. I'm going to move my head. And I'm going to box. I believe it's going to be very, very um, basic. I think I'm going to have to establish um, my jab and then pat the body. Well, I don't think he would be hitting me that much, but uh, I'm prepared to stand. I mean, if he does hit me, I'm going to stand in there. Now, if you jump in the water, you're going to get wet. So, you yeah, know, he's going to hit me, and I'm going to hit him also, you know. He may throw more punches. He may do all kinds of stuff. I just got to stay focused and do my my thing to make sure I slow him down. But once I slow him down, I should be able to take him out. I'm not taking a slingshot to war, you know. I got my bombs, too. You know, I'm taking uh, my grenades. I'm taking a little bit of napalm also. <laughs> Time now for the Castrol tale of the tape. Both of uh, these gentlemen in their early 30s. Stewart slightly heavier at 232 and with an inch and a half or an inch reach advantage, an inch and a half taller. And tonight's fight will be under the rules of the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Reservation. Standing eight count is in effect. Three knockdown rule. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell and a 10 point must system with three judges scoring here at ringside. And now up to our ring announcer, Ed Derry. From Foxwoods Resort Casino here in Mashantucket, Connecticut. This evening's big professional boxing card is approved by the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Boxing Commission. The Honorable Joseph Carlini, Chairman. The Honorable Roy R. Butler, Commissioner. And the Honorable John R. Burns, Executive Director. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10-round heavyweight belt, referee Frank Cap. Puccino. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks. He weighed in at an even 219 pounds. This young man has 14 wins, two losses, one draw, with eight knockouts. All the way from Phoenix, Arizona, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome aboard Darren Diamond D. Hayden. Hayden and his opponent in the blue corner wearing the solid purple trunks. He weighed in at an even 232 pounds. This pugilist has 36 wins, five losses with 35 big knockouts. A native of London, England, and now making his home in Safety Harbor, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Alex, the destroyer, Stewart. Stewart. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions. Touch gloves. Well, short instructions from Frank Cappuccino. And we're ready to get underway. Alex Stewart trying to shake the tag as a fighter who can overpower lesser competition, but one that cannot beat quality opponents. 
And, Sean, okay. he has been in the ring with the best, twice with Evander Holofield, Mike Tyson in 1990, George Foreman in 92, Michael Moore lost all of those fights. Yeah, he's been in with some, some bigger fighters. He's lost only the best fighters today. He knows what happened to him in that Jesse Ferguson fight back in August when he got caught early in that fight and sent down to the canvas. So this fight, he comes out with a bead of sweat on his body. Alex Stewart said his style has changed a lot. Now he's thinking more. He's taking his time to set up his opponents more. Alex Stewart says that his best cross is still his right cross. Alex Stewart, such a terrific fighter. Good style, good jab. Since he's trying to give fighters different styles now, the Georgia Bennington is corner. Jab outside and fight inside. Using that jab to try to set up his power. And where Stewart has gotten into trouble in the past is when he doesn't connect and doesn't seem to have the speed, Sean, to get himself out of that trouble. Yeah, he gets in, scores, and then not able to get out before he gets cracked. But you heard what he said, trying to crouch more, more head movement now. Georgie Benton is really a terrific trainer that is trying to take him to another level, something that Alex Stewart has, has needed for some time to reach to the next level. Well, if Stewart wins, it's usually by knockout. In fact, only one of his 36 wins has been a decision. That when we saw him last against Jesse Ferguson, he said in that fight he was asleep. He said he got, he has to take these fights more serious, fights like tonight. He says, I've turned up the speed, and I'm not going to come into the fight snoring. Meanwhile, Darren Hayden, big muscular fighter, good counter puncher, but many people wonder if he has the fire to compete in the upper class of boxing. Well, he has been in the ring with a lot of good fighters, but in the gym. He's now trying to step up in competition in his career. He describes himself as a boxer brawler. He loves to get on the inside and bang. His best punch is the left hook. He says he's known about this fight for about two months. And at one time, Darren Hayden was up to 248 pounds when he started training for this fight. So he's down in weight, and he is serious about his career now. Well, sometimes, considering his size, Hayden's punching power is really not as effective as you might expect from a big man. Tonight, Darren's at 219. His last fight, Darren Hayden was 234. That against Cleveland Woods. Good punches this first round. Hard shots from both heavyweights. Oh, like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is the very charming Lisa. This is Lisa. Let's get on the points. Let's get the points. Let's fire back to the body. You understand? Uh, right? You got it, Bob. That's what he's going to try to jump on you because he can't get to you behind your jab. Right. So your jab is where I'm going Now, keep the jab going. Keep the jab going. Keep him going back. You're going to slow him down. Right? Okay. Now, be good and alert because he's trying to steal you with the right hand. Right. Don't pull away from punches. Get under the punches. Block the punches. But do not pull away, right? Now you're doing just right. Don't rush in. Just take your time. Use the jab. You slow him down. Okay. Okay? And just like you did that round. Be quick and alert. Okay. Back at Foxwoods Casino. Outside of Mystic, Connecticut. Coastal town here in the Northeast. Scheduled for 10, the heavyweights Alex Stewart and Darren Hayden. Stewart in the purple trunks. He wears them in honor of his idol, Joe Lewis, and Hayden is in the black trunks. Yeah, beautiful time of the year to be here in this part of the country, just when the leaves are just turning. Pretty to see all the foliage here. Between rounds, they told Stewart, Georgie Benton said, that's perfect. Keep that jab going. Keep your hands high like he's doing there. Keep walking around. Hayden, he says he will slow down. There is some of that Pernell Whitaker that Hayden's talking about. See him getting real low, get way down underneath your opponent. All you give him is the top of your head. I 
difficult, Sean, is that to adjust to? Oh, it's extremely difficult if you're, if you're Alex Stewart. You hit a person on the top of their head, it's going to hurt your hand. So you have to try to do something to get him back up again. And the way to do that is start bringing in your uppercuts. How difficult will it be for Hayden to throw punches from that position? Not difficult at all. In fact, it's, it's more advantageous for him to get down real low because you, you coil up like a spring. Using your legs? And then, yeah, and then you spring out of that with a big uppercut of your own. Or a big punch of your own. There's a good combination from Stewart. Stewart will use those uh, jabs to set up the power, as we said earlier. Good example of that in that previous exchange. Yes. Alex is terrific at that. When he can slow his opponent down, when he walks him down like he's doing in this fight, and then Alex can use some speed. He changes gear gears real well. Where he gets in trouble is when the other fighters change gears also. Sean Stewart is 31 years old. How difficult is it to change your style at that age? Uh, it's very difficult, but the, the style that they're trying to change, that Ben is trying to change, he's just trying to add to the style that Alex Stewart has already. He's not trying to change it. Once you go to changing like a fighter's feet or the way he throws punches, the way he rotates, that's when you have trouble. These are... These are tools that fighters have used since they were young men. And they're extremely difficult to change, and it confuses a fighter. What Georgie Benton is trying to do is just add to what Alex Stewart has. Watch ahead, says so Stewart. Something else about getting down real low like Darren Hayden does is you've got to be careful of the top of his head. He does a nice job of protecting his chin. There he is. There's the uppercut from Stewart. Trying to bring that head up. Darren Hayden now giving more room. They want Stewart to control from the outside. He'll get some more instructions. Now. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Now listen, okay, that's how we can't complain about it now. It's, 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 it's happened. Now listen, you're doing a good job. The jab is working good for you. Keep it going. Now you're slowing this guy down, right? Right. Okay. Your fence is good. Everything is going good for you because you're working it just right. When you close your right eye. Now when you get close, when you get close, cut loose with both hands, right? Okay. And that's working good. The jab is working good. That's... That's the ticket. Yeah, don't worry. Don't pull out the way for the punch. Get under the punch and the Alex Stewart, 36 and 5, with 35 knockouts in the purple trunks against Darren Hayden, who comes in 14, 2, and 1, with eight knockouts. And Sean O'Grady in the corner of Alex Stewart between rounds. Basically, they said, keep doing what you're doing. You know, and I, I love the way George Benton tells his fighters. He, he doesn't want to get him excited. He tells him, I, I like what you're doing. Just continue with that jab. And it was terrific instructions, and also the, the tone over there. Sometimes you listen in over yeah, right. in the corner frantic. between rounds, and it's, right. and it's chaos. Yeah, frantic. And what you don't want to do with a world-class fighter like Stewart is fire him up. You want to let him control the tempo and the pace of, of every fight that he's in. Darren Hayden, I think, giving a little bit too much room. And Stewart, Stewart can pick him apart from the outside, and they know it in the corner of Alex. That's why they're saying use the jab. You don't want to get in there and muscle around with a fighter like Darren Hayden, six foot one, two hundred nineteen pounds. Alex Stewart, six foot two and a half, two hundred thirty-two pounds. Stewart has a one-inch reach advantage, seventy-seven inches. See, Darren Hayden has been sparring partner to the stars. And what sparring partners do, and he is real concerned about having sparring partner syndrome, they stand there and take the punches because it would take more energy to move out of the way of him. And see, he's right at the end of these punches from Stewart. It's a dangerous place to be. 
Does he want to fight from the outside? Is this to his advantage? He wants to be able to fight, as we heard him say. He would like to be able to fight like Cornell Whitaker. Unfortunately, I, I think body, bodily, he will never have the physique or the style of a fighter like that. Also, that takes think, its toll on your legs when you're absolutely. trying to fight down low, and we've seen Hayden do it for about yeah. 45 seconds in this fight. But he's not doing it now. Exactly. Has his legs been, been uh, worn out? Have his, his muscles there been exhausted? We see the time remaining in round number three. And it's 219 pounds on Darren Hayden. It's only 147 pounds on, on Cornell Whitaker. Neither fighter able to do much damage so far, although Stewart has controlled the pace of the battle. Yeah, although I see, I do see some swelling right now around the right eye of Hayden. Four straight jabs, and now finally the right hand as Hayden finds himself up against the ropes and quickly gets out as we near the end of round number three. And steal him, steal him, keep stealing him. When you get close, you cut him a brand new one in the body, right? All right. Hands on, stay alert, right? Doing a good job. That jab is killing him. That's the ticket, man. When you get close, rip him in the body, right? That's all right. We don't worry about that. I can have you try everything. You know, just, you just do something about it. Just when you, when you see him trying to do it, just take care of it. Not, not you talk to him? Maybe just keep doing that job. Doing line. your job, right? Doing a hell of a job. Now that jab is taking care of business. Keep it going. Now he's slowing down. After a while, you'll be on the inside. You'll cut him a brand new ass. He's slowing down real good. Okay, go back. Well, the advice to Stewart from George Benton between rounds was to keep using that jab, and eventually you'll be able to get on the inside, but be patient. Yeah, you know, you can't get in a hurry with a fighter like Darren. He is ring-wise in the gym, and he knows only one way to fight, and that is you get in there and, and brawl. Although you see him moving now, and that's that maybe what's causing him a lot of problems. What they're saying to Stewart is you got plenty of time. He is wearing down. You've got the advantage. In fact, in the last round, I saw a gear change for Alex Stewart. That's why the swelling became apparent around the right eye of Darren Hayden. Hayden. And really the perfect kind of fight for Alex Stewart so far. He is, I think, pitching a shutout. And I think he's also got an opponent who's right there in front of him to take every shot that he's got. He's got giving back a few shots, so Alex has to be cautious. Hayden won his first five professional bouts and then lost to Everett Mayo for the Virginia State title. That was in November of 90. He then spent the next three years away from boxing, but was busy last year with eight bouts. However, he's had only one fight here in 1995. And John, you can say what you want about putting time in in the gym, but I don't think your endurance is tested until you actually step into the ring for a real bout. Not at all, bro. It's a different fight in front of the crowd, in front of the lights of television, and you know that everything's on the line in this fight. Now, this round, Darren Hayden has gotten back to what he knows best, and that is getting on top of your opponent, swarming him, and punching inside. Darren Hayden is physically not able to be a long-range fighter. And swelling under the right eye now, Darren Hayden. Becoming ever more visible as this fight wears on. Yeah, Darren is a hard puncher. Eight KOs in his 14 wins, but he has more of a thud punch. It's more of a, of a brute power strength punch instead of a snap like Alex Stewart has. Stewart has a cracking punch. Crisp. Darren Hayden, good power, but it's more of a forcing punch, like that right there. Downstairs to the body is what they told him between rounds. Alex Stewart following the instructions. Well, Stewart has to know, Sean, that he's running out of time at the age of 31. 
Yes, and perhaps that's why he's so active. You know, he fought back in August. Now here he is again. He wants to fight next month. He wants to fight in uh, November and December. After visiting the corner of Darren Hayden between rounds, checking the uh, the swelling under the right eye, testing the vision, and the fight goes on in round number five. Meanwhile, Alex Stewart is also working with a cut. And once again, Stewart is using that jab. There are times when Hayden, who gets sort of caught between styles, fighting upright and then trying to fight low, a la Pernell Whitaker. Now let's go into the goal of the champ, Sean O'Grady, who is with George Benton. Sean? Hell of a job, but just one problem. We just got that cut out, but he's doing a hell of a job with this kid. He's jabbing his kid, he's having him, keeping him under control. Doing very good with it. What are you looking for in Alex at this point and this stage trying to change his style a bit? Well, I'm not trying to change styles, just improve on style. You never change styles. You just improve on the styles. Well, Alex is jabbing better now and he's, you know, he's getting under punches. See, what we were trying to do is get him, get him a, a, a better defense. Yeah, you're not hurrying him up. Why? Because he don't need to rush. The jab takes care of the rush. See the jab? See, that takes care of everything. So you don't have to rush. How about the eye? There's some swelling around the right eye of Hayden. Is that is that going to be a problem? You go in for that? Well, what we don't we don't look for targets. We don't look for targets. I'm not looking to hit him on the eye because you 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 you're going to look for one one spot and you you know you hit him everywhere. Do you think Hayden is fighting the wrong kind of fight plan? He's staying right out of the. He's fighting the only fight he can because a, a Alex's jab is controlling the fight. So this is the only fight Hayden can fight. All right. Well, I see some good changes. Keep it up. Very nice work over here. They're very happy. Georgie Benton is, is quite happy with Alex Stewart. He looks terrific so far. Bill? All right, Sean, thank you very much. You mentioned Alex Stewart. Most of his losses against top-level competition, they were ones that uh, Stewart clearly lost, but in the fight against George Foreman, many people thought that he won that bout, even though Foreman took a split decision. Meanwhile, Stewart continuing to work and Hayden yet to solve the mystery of the Alex Stewart jab. Now under 30 seconds remaining in round number five. You see that swelling under the right eye increasing. Yeah, and no hurry from the corner of Alex Stewart. There's why he's in complete control. He's controlling from the outside, which is what Georgie Benton wanted him to do. He's got Hayden staying out there which is something that Benton wanted also. Perfect for Alex Stewart. And that's round number five. <laughs> this one is over. The swelling has closed the right eye of Darren Hayden. And the ringside physician conferring with the referee, Frank Cappuccino, stopped the bout. Here was the scene. The veteran referee says that's it. 
and he should. Without being able to see out of that right eye, Darren Hayden eating too many left hooks. And it was only going to get worse. Plus, you know what? I hadn't given a round to Darren Hayden. I thought Alex Stewart controlled the, the jab. He controlled the fight from the outside. He kept Darren Hayden out on the end of that jab. He really imposed his will on the style of, and the boxing of Darren Hayden. Alex Stewart, just what he wanted at this point, you know, keep active. Every month, you want somebody in there fighting in like uh, Darren Hayden tried, but just didn't have the skills. You know, you can see that eye where on the outside, it's got swelling, and you can't see outside. You can see a little bit right through the middle. You can see his pupil a little bit right there, but outside, you're, you're hindered. Your vision's hindered, and that's what Frank Cap Cappuccino saw. You see, that's enough. All right, to make it official, let's go up to our ring announcer, Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen from Foxwoods Resort Casino, Principal Darren Diamond D. Hayden, unable to continue. Therefore, referee Frank Cappuccino stops this bout at the end of the fifth round. And a winner by a TKO, Alex the Destroyer Stewart. So Alex Stewart, Stewart runs his record to 37 and 5. Now with 36 knockouts, and we'll return with more from Foxwoods in a moment.